like to start this video by apologising. Um, the audio was terrible, so I'm going to have to voice over the entire time. Anyway, we start off to sharpen a chisel. The best thing to have is a piece of glass. The thicker the better, well, to this sort of thickness, which is about, I don't know, just under a centimetre. Uh, it needs to be very clean. The reason you use glass is it is perfectly flat. So whenever you're doing any sharpening, you've got no dents and chunks and stuff to damage the chisel's blade in any way. Now you need to make sure that it is perfectly dry as well because you are going to be using double sided sticky tape on it and as you know double sided sticky tape, well any tape doesn't tend to like water. Okay and now you need to put down some non-slip mat of some kind. With my piece of glass it was probably heavy enough not to move around but I do have bits of dust and dirt and whatever on my desk. And I didn't really want to start scratching the bottom side of it. So check that it's not going anywhere and also I checked to see if there was any bits of stuff on the glass that I'd missed. Okay now to get the wet and dry this is 120 grain. grain and this is a wa Japanese water stone but I'm not sure about um, its grit level okay now the fun bit of getting the double sided sticky tape onto each of the backs of the wet and dry sandpaper this is a fiddly job but it needs to be done right you need to make sure that the double sided sticky tape is flat down so if you get ridges lumps and bumps then it won't actually give you a good edge on your chisel I made an error here which is when I was sticking them to the glass they should have been right up to the edge but um, I later on find that out and curse quite a lot okay so this is when I realised that I need to get the edge closer to me, so luckily enough, at least two of them I can get to okay-ish. Right, I spray some more of the window cleaner, which is apparently best, but I'm not entirely sure why. Now you place the back of the chisel flat on the surface and move backwards and forwards this removes a small layer of the back of the chisel and this will show you how much work needs to be done on it. If you have a look at all the what is it discoloration there that all needs to come off and that will bring it back to a nice flat back. Again just backwards and forwards making sure it is absolutely flat to the sandpaper. I started off actually using it on the 400 grit so I wanted to see how much work needed to be done. Which to be honest considering they're not very expensive chisels there wasn't a, a massive amount of work to be done. I've uh, sharpened um, more expensive chisels and had to do a lot lot more work on them to get them just to a place where you can sharpen them quite simply. At this point you do put quite a lot of pressure down on it. this is done right you can have an extremely good chisel for not a large amount of money as long as it will hold its, sh uh, its blade. Now if you have a look there's only now a tiny tiny dot of discoloration in the middle the rest is now almost completely flat. This 
will be the last bit to get that discoloration off, I think. Yep, completely gone now. Here I decide that it might be a good idea to clean my desk so that I can actually move some stuff around. You know, this, this sort of thing shouldn't be done before you start recording a course. Anyway. This is now where I point out that I made the error and they should have all been flushed to the edge so I could reach them easily with the chisel. I'm not a happy bunny and I start to make a few errors here. For example, instead of moving just directly side to side, which I should be doing, for some reason I start going around in circles. I think that that's just me still reeling from having to now move all of those sandpapers. It's a very monotonous job um, sticky taping them down, so I, I wasn't too happy to having to do it again. Anyway. Whenever, sand, um, whenever sharpening anything, I find that there's a feel to it. And once you've done it enough, you'll, sudden, you'll start to know when it's right to stop. And I just rely on a feeling now. Okay, now I dry off the um, wet and dry sandpaper, so I just want to get a little bit more abrasion than with the the wetness. And I didn't want to change the actual um, the paper. I didn't want to go up any more grit. This is 400, and I didn't want to go down uh, any lower. But I just wanted a little bit more of an abrasive surface, and I find you get that if you just take away a little bit of the dampness. As you can see, I'm holding the chisel at a slight angle. You can buy a rig that will hold it at the exact angle so that you don't accidentally take off too much of the bevel, but I find I can hold it at the right angle. You just want it at the almost exactly the same angle as the bevel. And every time you look at it, you'll notice that you can see a slight bit that's being sharpened. I'm just testing it now, just to see how much better it was. Um, you'll have to take my word for it, but it was so blunt when I started this that it, it wouldn't cut balsa wood. Just continue, only coming back with the blade facing away from you. Make sure you dry it off and look at it on multiple times if you are accidentally scratching too much off or whatever at least you know sooner rather than later if you keep checking it's getting a lot lot sharper but still nowhere near where we want it to be as you can see I haven't used any of the other sandpaper but I realized that although this was very blunt didn't need much work doing to it in the sense of it didn't have any big chips or gouges out of the blade, it just needed to be rehomed. If you can have a look at the top, you'll notice that there's just a slight extra piece of bevel. There it is. Okay, and now the blade is to where I want it, and I'm just demonstrating the sharpness of the blade. As I say, this was absolutely blunt when I first started, and unfortunately I did record it, um, but along with the audio issues, I lost bits of it as well. Now, I will be showing you in just a second what the blade looked like before under a microscope, and what it looked like now, so you will be able to see a marked difference. So, 
I'll show you that now. The first one I'm going to show you is when it was blunt and you can see all the chips and cracks and it doesn't look too great there. This one is when it's sharpened. Now, you will notice that a chip seems to follow the microscope. That is not a chip, that is a piece of dust or something that I keep knocking along the blade. But it's a marked improvement on how straight it is and how flat it is. Anyway, thanks for watching. Any questions, get in touch.